Welcome to my 1 to 99 and 120 range guide for 2019. So when you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax and enjoy. In this guide, I'll be covering a variety of things, all of which you can find timestamps for in the description below. I'll be covering the useful items, useful skills, useful experience boosts, other useful guides I have, explaining the ranged skill, basic gear examples, levels 1 to 99, the quests for ranged experience, then I'll be covering the low level overview and training, mid level overview and mid level training, the high level overview and high level training, which is a very interesting one because ranged has a lot of diversity in terms of training, but really doesn't at the same time. More on that later. There are a ton of useful items for the ranged skill and not all of them will be listed here, however most of them will. You have auras that can heal you or gain you prey points, being vampirism or penance, or you can get extra damage from auras like the reckless aura. You have the charming imp item which is unlocked from 100,000 engineering tokens which can pick up and crush charms for summoning experience. You have the bone crusher and the herbicide and cedar side that pretty much do the same and have upgrades. The Kiln Cape is the best in slot cape unlocked from the Fight Kill minigame. There's a guide to that in the description below. The Corruption Shot ability is a very powerful AoE bleeding ability you want to get if you're somewhere between the mid and high levels, but it will cost you a bit, but it's a very powerful ability. We have the Enhanced Excalibur, which is a healing item that can save you food on your Slayer tasks, unlocked from the Seer's Village tasks. You have Blood Amulets, which can be made by combining a Blood Amulet Necklace Shard with a Amulet of Fury, for example, which can give you passive healing, which are very useful for the mid to high levels and if you want to AFK. We also have Scrimshaws that can increase your common experience or increase your damage or accuracy, and the Sacrifice Scrimshaw increases your common experience by 50% at the cost of you not getting any drops anymore. There are also a variety of summoning familiars that can heal you, give you extra damage, or just hoard some items. There are also useful dungeoneering necklaces, like the bone necklaces, which are useful in combination with the bone crusher for unlimited prayer at monsters that drop bones. There are of course useful skills for the ranged combat skill, much like the other combat skills, invention is useful to perk up your gear with and benefit you doing combat, Herbal is useful because you can create powerful potions like overloads to boost your stats and give you various other benefits. The Slayer skill is great to get access to high level monsters that give great experience, profit and charms. The summoning skill is again useful for summoning familiars. And the prayer skill is useful for having access to curses like soul splits or the damage boosting curses. Some useful experience boosts are the wise perk, pulse cores, torstal incense sticks, the refer friend scroll, the wisdom aura, double experience weekend of course, clan cap boost depending on how many times you've capped in a row it's three four five or six percent extra experience and some of these are definitely worth using if you want that little bit of extra experience when training ranged combat. Speaking of more of something, how about some more knowledge? If you need more knowledge on various things in game, whether that's DPS, gearing, different skills, useful PVM abilities, just overall in-depth guides on different topics, I'll link a few useful ones in the description below because some topics are very in-depth and hard to understand if you don't know anything about them just yet and it would take me way too long to explain everything you need to know in one single video. But I will explain how ranged works. So, your ranged and defense levels. The higher your ranged level is, the higher your accuracy and damage will be, regardless of weapons and armor, although those make a difference. The higher your defense level is, the less accuracy or hit chance your opponents will have on you, and defense bonus from armor, potions, and prayers can increase both of these even more. Your ammo damage is capped to the tier of your ranged weapon. For example, if you are using very high tier arrows on a lower tier bow, your damage will be capped to the damage of that bow. The ability damage formula, if you're interested in stats and specifics and whatever and you want to calculate things, is on screen now. Even though there's a legacy combat system for RuneScape, the main way of doing combat is using abilities. And those abilities need to be on your action bar for you to use them properly. Some basic bar examples for both two-handed ranged weapons and dual wield ranged weapons are on screen now. Though, when using these bars, I recommend you turn on Revolution++ Plus Plus so that the thresholds are automatically used. Thresholds are abilities that take 50% adrenaline to activate. You build adrenaline by using your basic abilities in combat. 
You will not have access to all of the abilities on screen if you're level 1 ranged, but as soon as you level up you will get these abilities. To change your action or ability bar, click the lock on the action bar to unlock it. To turn on revolution, right click the settings wheel and choose action bar settings. Go to the tab combat mode and then tick off revolution combat mode to turn it on. Then tick off that it should automatically use thresholds and ultimate abilities for you to make it easier as a newer or returning player to get familiar with the combat system. There's also a tab called Combat Experience here where you can choose what experience you gain when training combat with a particular combat style. If you gain 1000 experience, one third of that experience will be HP experience or constitution experience. This is a skill you can train with all three combat styles. The other two thirds of that XP will be either in ranged or in defense experience or in both split in two depending on how you set up your combat experience settings. Here are some basic gear examples for levels 1 to 40, 40 to 50, 50 to 60, 60 to 70 and level 70 until you start using proper gear for PVM and bossing. Levels 1 to 40 you want to be using leather armor and a charge bow or short bow. A charge bow does not require any arrows, a short bow does require bronze arrows. The cost of this low level build will be around 1 to 10k. Levels 40 to 50 you want to be using a green dragon hide armor setup and a U short bow. You want to be using adamant arrows or better. This will cost you around 30k. Levels 50 to 60 you're going to be using a full set of blue dragon hide armor, a magic short bow, an amulet of glory, rune arrows and a ring of wealth. You can get all of this for just 75k GP. You can alternatively also use spine gear which is DPS gear instead but this is very expensive. Levels 60 to 70 you want to be using Demon Slayer gear unless you can't buy it for the price I put in the video. If you can't, use full red dragon hide instead and at level 65 defense use full royal dragon hide instead. For your weapon you want an elder shortbow and dragon arrows. You want to pick yourself up a obsidian cape from the grand exchange. I'll be showing you guys where that is soon. Level 70 and beyond, you want to get yourself a full set of armored or armor, a crystal bow or black salamander weapon, which shoots Harland Atar, for your information, and the crystal bow does not require any arrows whatsoever, but it does require the Roving Elves quest. This build will set you back 50 million GP, but everything is cheap except for the armor. The ring will be a archer's ring or berserker ring, it really depends on what you want to buy. The archer's ring does give you more ranged bonus though, so it's a better ring overall for just ranged. You can buy most of your low to mid level ranged gear at ranged weapon or armor shops found throughout the world of runescape. The easiest one to get to in my opinion is the one located close to the Varrock center. You can easily walk towards Varrock from the starting area being Lumbridge or Birthrope, just unlock the lodestone and just go to that shop to buy your starter range gear for a very cheap price. Alternatively for everything else you can go to the Grand Exchange and buy all your gear there. All you have to do is go through a quick conversation with the Grand Exchange tutor and you're set up to buy anything and everything you want. This is pretty much the trading market of runescape and it's also a bank. Here are the quests that give you ranged experience or just pure ranged experience and to the right you can see some recommended quests you should complete as a low to mid level player to get your starter common experience really quickly. Being Vampire Slayer, Rune Mysteries, the Demon Slayer quest, the Grand Tree quest and the Horror from the Deep quest. You'll be completing these quests later on in runescape anyway so you might as well do it early on. Welcome to the low level training overview. The only way to AFK at the lower levels is by using aggression potions and if you're a newer player or you have a new account this is not an option for you because of the price. For most of you guys watching this video you'll have to train on trolls, low level slayer or chickens for your first levels of ranged combat or alternatively complete quests or do the shattered worlds minigame. And from levels 40 to 50 you have the option of killing pyrofiends or baby blue dragons to get to that level 50 range to get to the mid level training section. Levels 1 to 40 for experience rate of around 25k experience per hour you can kill the trolls in the birthrobe mine. Just teleport to the birthrobe lodestone and follow the video as seen. The respawn timer on these trolls seems to be increased so you can just kill them in one single area. And just keep on killing them until you're level 40 ranged and defense if you want to train defense as well. 
Alternatively, you can also kill chickens close to the Lumbridge Lodestone in Lumbridge at the farm area. You can pick up the feathers and eggs and sell these on the Grand Exchange. The chickens are around the same experience rate. Levels 1 to 50 you can also train at the minigame called Shattered Worlds. This minigame is perfect if you're an Iron Man or if you don't have any gear just because you can gear up and get food from the minigame itself. You simply go there from the Lumber to Lodestone in the Lumber Swamp, click on the blue portal, choose the option Equip and Feed Me and then you just start killing monsters. It's really that simple. This minigame is about as good experience as just trading normally levels 1 to 50. And you can get familiar with the combat system and trying to do as much damage as possible which is great. Levels 1 to 99 you can also train the Slayer skill. The Slayer skill in itself is really simple at the core but it can get really really in depth and that's why I recommend you watch my 1 to 99 and 120 Slayer guide if you want more information. You can start training Slayer at the Slayer Master Culturio, which is the beginner Slayer Master, and he will give you your first task. Slayer is basically getting a task, killing a certain amount of monsters, returning to your Slayer Master, getting a new task, and repeating the process. Levels 40 to 50 range, you want to be killing baby blue dragons in the Tafri dungeon. This will give you experience rates of around 40 to 50k experience per hour. Now you probably can't use the shortcut I was using in the video because it has a high agility level requirement. You will have to get an item called the Dusty Key, which is basically just walking around, killing a guard, opening a jail cell. You know, it's very easy, but it takes you a minute and I'll leave a guide to that in the description below, which I made on my channel. Now. These baby blue dragons aren't very easy, but the blue dragons around the baby blue dragons, if you aggro them, can hit very hard if you don't pray magic. So try not to attack them by accident like I did. If you have level 30 slayer, levels 40 to 50, you can actually kill pyre fiends for a higher experience rate per hour than the baby blue dragons, being around 55 to 75k plus experience per hour in pure ranged. The pyre fiends are located in the Fremening Slayer dungeon and they are relatively easy to kill and therefore they give you experience rate which is pretty damn decent. You can pick up the impious ashes they drop and the other stuff to sell on the Grand Exchange for a little bit of money. The mid-level training section for ranged really isn't that interesting. There are of course many more options than listed on screen, but I just recommend you try either blue dragons, if you want to make a bit of money, crocodiles, AFKing at the Abyss or Training Slayer to get access and explore various monsters. The best way to train at this level is definitely in the Abyss for experience rate of over 300k experience per hour if you're using Chinchompas and an offhand crossbow, in this case being a rune crossbow. Getting to the Abyss is dangerous as you have to walk there manually through the wilderness. Once you're inside you are safe however. This is also a viable training option all the way to 99 and at the high level section I will repeat this method. However, I will give a cheap alternative way to train here. However, at the lower levels it really isn't worth training here using a two-handed bow. You will have to use chinchompers for AoE attacks to get that high experience rate. If you want more information on this method, check out my full abyss guide linked in the description below as there's a lot more to know about the abyss. Levels 50 to 70, you can also train at crocodiles found in the desert. These crocodiles will be around 75k plus experience per hour depending on your ranged weapon and gear. At level 60, using the Elder Shortbow, your experience rate will go up much higher than compared to level 50 using a Magic Shortbow. Be sure to bring along some water skins because the desert heat will do damage against you. You can get here by walking all the way from Al Karid or from the Bandit Camp Lodestone if you've completed the Desert Treasure Quest. Levels 50 to 70, you can also train on the Big Blue Dragons in the Taverly Dungeon, again requiring either a high agility level or the Dusty Key, guide in the description by the way, which give you around 80 to 110k experience per hour depending on your ranged weapons and gear. I highly suggest you take either an anti-fire or a prayer potion and pray magic against a dragon fire, otherwise the dragons will do a lot of damage. You can pick up the blue dragon hide and dragon bones to sell on the Grand Exchange for around 800k to 1 mil GP per hour. So we have arrived at the high level ranged training section. Now you can see a lot of methods are on screen, however 
I will not be covering all of these methods separately in this guide because of some of the methods on screen, there is no incentive to do the other other methods of range training unless you really, really want to. Because stuff like Corruption Shot, Farming, Gold Rush Dungeon 2 minions, Gemstone Dragons, Celestial Dragons, Crystal Shapeshifters, although those being very good experience, but they're kind of made irrelevant just because of the fact they are locked behind higher requirements than, for example, Elite Dungeons 3 Mob Farming. So I'll be adjusting the high-level training overview you guys are seeing now to something more slimmed down. So, very simple. If you want to AFK and make money, go to Firewatches and gain prayer, fire making and farming experience while AFKing there. If you want to simply AFK with low requirements, go to the Abyss but you won't be making any money. If you want to AFK for meh experience and get money, AFK Capsarius in a player owned Slayer dungeon which does require level 99 Slayer. For active training, if you want to get dungeoneering tokens and around 1 million range experience per hour, go do Elite Dungeons 1 token farming. Guide in the description, by the way. If you want money and insane experience, go do Elite Dungeons 3 mob farming. If you want to do various monsters and make money, go do Slayer. If you want to get the Bladed Dive and Salt the Wound ability, go do the Shattered Worlds minigame for experience rates of around 500k experience per hour. If you want to make good money at levels 90 plus ranged, go and try and learn next soloing. If you want to AFK ranged and make some money bossing, maybe have a chance for a boss bet, go AFK Kriara, also known as Armadil. So, if you want dungeoneering tokens and good range experience from level 70 on, you can do Elite Dungeons 1 token farming. I don't recommend you do this solo, but it's definitely possible, but it's better to do this in a group of three with either two friends or clan mates. I have a separate guide on this if you need more information, but what it basically is, is killing the mini bosses you find on the first floor, giving 5,000 dungeoneering tokens each, and then repeating or restarting the instance and just repeating the process. Quite simple and very good ranged experience per hour and one of the best ways to train in 2019. If you want to simply AFK using ranged and the corruption shot ability or using chins without any high requirements, simply just go and AFK the abyss for experience rates of around 450 to 550k experience per hour. This is a very well known method and therefore it will be very packed if you go there, but it's nice in AFK once you find yourself a empty world. It is a great idea to use a scrimshaw of sacrifice here which does cost a little bit of money but it will boost your experience rate by 50% which is massive. And at the cost of losing your drops but you won't be picking up anything at the abyss anyways because nothing is profitable except for maybe the occasional water talisman. I would say this method is becoming less popular than it used to be let's say 2 or 3 years ago just because of elite dungeons 1 and free farming. Firewatches are even better to AFK for a similar experience rate, however they do have higher requirements as you need the Sun Spear, the upgraded version of it, to automatically cremate the corpses for fire making and prayer experience, but if you've completed the River of Blood quest, you're pretty much set to go. It's quite easy to AFK with ranged just because the Firewatches have less of a hit chance on you than if you were using a different style. But if you don't like questing and requirements like Soul Split or Prayer Auras and such, you may want to do one of the other methods I'm mentioning in this video instead. But if you want to AFK 120 Prayer, Fire Making and get some farming experience while getting common experience and making money and getting charms, Vire Watches are a great option. Next up, the best way to train combat in RuneScape 3 as of right now. You get insanely high common experience, you get charms, you make money, you get invention components from the relics you can disassemble, and it's quite easy to get into as well. You can do this in a group of three, or just solo, or duo, it doesn't matter, but the more people, the more experience you will be getting, but solo, you can get anywhere from 800k to 1600k plus experience per hour. Yes, you heard that right, you can get up to 1.6 million ranged experience per hour solo doing this. It can get quite boring though, but the effort is definitely worth the experience or just the return you get. 
I will say, with ranged, it is better to use mechanized enchompers for more experience, but using a regular bow, royal crossbow, noxious longbow, whatever, you still get a huge amount of experience. I highly suggest checking out my full guide on this if you're interested, linked in the description below. So Capsarius are pretty good to AFK in Legacy in your player own Slayer dungeon. You can also use someone else's dungeon if you want to. They're around 400 to 500, maybe 600k experience per hour. It really depends on your gear setup. I was getting around 600k experience per hour. Now these are around 3 to 5 mil GP per hour. It really depends on how many Ascension Keystones you get which are of course used for the bosses and you can sell those on the grand exchange just don't forget to bring along your magic note paper for the keystones and aggression potions to keep them aggressive now that's pretty much the end of my 1 to 99 and 120 range guide now if you compare this to my magic and melee guides which are also new fresh and updated it's a lot shorter because i decided to not include every single method in the game that is a thing because Mainly, the methods I mentioned and showed separately in this video are the best to do for your ranged training. To do something else may be a waste of time and that's why I didn't recommend to do anything else. I didn't show any bosses separately like Armadil or Nex because I have separate guides on both of those on how to AFK Armadil and how to properly solo Nex, so I'll leave those linked in the description below. Anyways, I hope you guys understand and appreciate a shorter guide. And with that being said, if you enjoyed and found it helpful, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.